All right, guys, welcome back. So this time I'm going to talk about a um, question that I get asked a lot, like what kind of 3D printer do I need for my dioramas? What should I purchase? So I'm going to talk some of the technical stuff today, um, at least in, in my opinion. Um, you know, ultimately it comes down to the information that I'll cover with you today, along with what your budget is, what your timeline is. Do you need it right now? Can you wait? Um, are you making a lot of stuff or could you make a lot of stuff for your dioramas? Does it make more sense to go to a service like Shapeways, um, somebody who already has a 3D printer? There's all sorts of questions that go in, into this of whether or not a 3D printer is right for you. Um, and ultimately, you know, are you going to make stuff to sell or are you going to make stuff, you know, just for yourself? Um, if you're going to make stuff to sell, how are you going to differentiate yourself from what other people are selling? I'll talk at the end of the video of where you can find files at. Uh, but, you know, ultimately, are, are you just going to sell the same stuff or are you going to design your own? So we'll share a little bit more about that. So um, before I move on, you know, ultimately, safety first. I wanted to ask you to review the manufacturer's guidelines for whatever printer you decide to go with. Um, talk to your physician, uh, especially if you have any concerns about the materials that, that you could potentially use. Do some due diligence, you know, in addition to this video. Read up on your 3D printer. Um, if it's an FDM printer, which I'll explain that here in a little bit, what's their reliability like? Um, if it's a resin printer, what are the resins and, and kind of what what do they feel like in, and, uh, in terms of use? What do they smell like? Um, a lot of the resin printers, I'll talk a little bit later on maybe about, they have a very noticeable odor associated with them, <clears throat> depending on who you talk to. Some people can't smell anything. Other people notice it fairly quickly and they just don't like having that in their house or around their family. So when all else fails, follow the manufacturer guidelines and talk to your physician. Those should be the first two things that you do. So primary printer types, FDM or filament printers, um, very simple explanation. You're heating up the filament, you're pushing it through an extruder or a nozzle, and as that filament comes out, it adheres to a bed. Um, some of them are heated, so for both of the printers that I have, the beds are heated, and that helps the filament as it's extruded stick to the bed. Um, then you have resin printers that don't have a heater, um, and they're using a liquid resin. Um, and the way that you cure that resin, quote-unquote, inform it from a liquid to a solid, is you use an, an ultraviolet light that is built into the printer. And as the printer cycles, uh, that light turns on and turns off in different places. And that's ultimately what causes your print to go from a, a digital form to a physical form on your printer. Um, and in this case, the resin adheres to the bed as it's cured. And the, uh, the printer, in this case, will actually print inverted. I'm going to make more sense if you watch some resin printing videos, which I will not cover today. So FDM printers, I primarily use something called PLA. There's other stuff out there, PET, um, ABS, and those all have acronyms associated with them. Um, and they involve heating up the filament to over 195 degrees Celsius. Use a heated bed, in my case about 60 degrees Celsius. Print on a mirror, glass, flexible um, bed, so on. And you use a layer height of 0.2 millimeters. Doesn't sound like a lot, but you know when you print something out, you have noticeable layer lines. Whereas when I talk about resin printers later, um, that layer height is about 0.05 millimeters or 0 0.025 millimeters. So the resolution on our resin printer is significantly better than what you would see on a filament printer. So you print something out, next step in this process, do something called post-processing. That's where you remove supports, you sand with 150 through 1000 grit sandpaper, sometimes two or 4000, depending on what it is. You reprime with what's here in the photo is what I use. You re-sand it. Um, and then you uh, you paint it with acrylic. So just like any other model, you'll, you'll paint it with acrylic paint, um, whether you're using the, the inexpensive stuff or the expensive stuff, get it to the color that you would like, and then you would seal it with a acrylic paint sealer. That's the fundamental process behind um, FDM printing, and it, I make it sound really quick, but depending on how, how in-depth you go, this can take a while. So moving on to Think, things to consider. So FDM printers can have a fairly long cycle time, upwards of you know more than 72 hours. Um, 
post-processing can be time consuming. Um, what bed surface will you use? I talked about that earlier. Um, what support is available for your printer? So go on Facebook, see if you can find groups. Um, and like everything else in life, you get what you pay for. Um, if you think you're going to get an inexpensive printer and have it the same results as a much more expensive printer, it can, um, but you got to tinker with it. And you need to weigh how comfortable you are with doing something like that. So I personally do not leave my printer running when I'm at, when I'm not at home due to the temperatures involved and the potential for a fire. So some of the maintenance activities associated with an FDM printer. So for all kinds of printers, you're going to have to do some maintenance. And I'll talk about the resin printer at the appropriate time. But for the filament, most of what I've had to do is change the nozzle, um, change the extruder, periodically take the glass bed off and clean it and get a nice clean surface, and then, of course, re-leveling it. Um, that is something that I see a lot of folks that struggle with just leveling their printer, um, and it is something you need to become proficient at, especially if you want to have um, good results. So that's the, one of the basic things. So OctoPrint is something that I use with my filament printers so that I can see where they're at. So this is an app that runs on my phone, and then a Raspberry Pi actually tells the printer on what to do. It allows you to do real-time monitoring of the extruder temperature, the bed temperature, along with doing time-lapse videos of your prints. Just something kind of cool to do and allows you to do live viewing of the prints as well. You could also use a nanny cam, an old cell phone, whatever the case may be. The software for Octoprint is ultimately free and you could just give that a quick Google and learn more about it. So that's kind of the fundamentals behind Octoprint and I wanted to share the two kinds of printer or two printers I have. So one on the left is a CR10, the one on the right is a FlashForge uh, Creator Pro. Um, both of them have served me well. Um, the one on the right does have a little bit more capability um, in terms of variety of filament in terms of ease of use than the CR10, although in theory it will, will do pretty much everything on the right will do and generate bigger prints. So that's it for FDM for now. Um, next up, I want to talk about resin printers. So as I mentioned, um, you're going to use a resin with a UV light to, to, pure, uh, to print them. Um, it is very messy. So you're using something that has a viscosity of pancake syrup, um, and there are health effects associated with it um, based on the safety data sheet from the manufacturer. And you don't have to heat it, right? So with the other one, other kind of printer, you have to have a heated bed. In general, you don't have to heat a resin printer unless it's in a really cold place. Like if you have a garage and you live in a colder climate, um, you may have to heat the bed or heat the room that it's in to keep your resin from um, becoming too thick or too viscous and you're not able to get a good quality print. So you do have to shake your resin um, fairly frequently if you're not going to use your printer drain it, shake it up, get it back into solution, um, and then pour it back into the vat. It just ultimately depends on how often and how frequently you're using your uh, resin printer. And it does have a much finer resolution, as I mentioned earlier. So in terms of post-processing, you wash it in a solvent like isopropyl alcohol, usually 91 to 99%. Remove supports. You cure it with an ultraviolet light so you're hardening it. You will have to do some light sanding to remove some scars in a lot of cases uh, from the surface of the print. Um, you'll then prime with a fine primer. I like this uh, Tamiya here in the photo. Um, and again, from there, you, you paint it with acrylics as you know, just like you would do with the uh, FDM print. And then you seal it. And from there, you are ready to go. Um, so this is, you know, this primer, as you, you all know, is fairly expensive. Uh, but it does do a nice job of maintaining the details, which is ultimately what you want um, and why you would go with a resin printer to begin with and why you want to keep those. So maintenance and consumables. So the, the two things that you'll, you will become very proficient with when it comes to these resin printers is changing the LCD screen. So this is ultimately what kind of takes that resin um, and turns it into the object that you want. Change it, changing an FB, FEP uh, sheet, which is kind of in the, the vat where the resin sits, you'll change those at whatever frequency you need to. So you got to empty out this vat occasionally to get little chunks out so that your printer stays level. Um, you got to keep it less messy. So kind of clean as you go. It's something that, uh, you know, I kind of have to remind myself to do. Wipe, it, wipe down your work surface with alcohol. I actually have my printers in like a little... Uh, 
the little pan so if there's any spills um, that spill is maintained in the pan and doesn't get on the floor I would not recommend that you use a resin printer on a carpeted surface because it is very difficult to uh, get out so you know you know you'll need to be um, comfortable leveling your bed and printing between FDM and resin there is a bit of a learning curve um, between the two because they they operate in different theories and in, in how they work so you will have to get comfortable doing that um, you'll have to get comfortable with it messing with the uh, electronics a little bit in terms of you know installing a new LCD screen maybe a new motherboard occasionally but there's a lot of good YouTube videos so you're also going to need a lot of disposable gloves so anything I do with my resin printer I'm wearing gloves um, a UV light post print to cure them um, as I mentioned earlier you'll need a solvent like isopropyl alcohol um, that's the cleanest thing to uh, to clean your prints with there's other stuff that you can use that you could find but ultimately I try to use isopropyl alcohol and you're going to use a lot a lot of paper towels so um, you know when COVID started this was a bit of a challenge um, but you will need disposable towels to kind of help with this process um, there's a, a big user group presence for a lot of these resin printers as I mentioned earlier just do your due diligence and your research for what's best for you so next up special safety considerations so I personally will wear goggles gloves and then um, follow the directions from the MSDS and as I kind of touch things off with talk to your physician if you have any concerns about health effects uh, before you invest in the printer take them the MSDS tell your physician what you're planning on doing and, and get your advice from them as opposed to random people on the internet so how do I find stuff to make so there's websites like Thingiverse Yegi Y-E-G-G-I um, Google you know you just Google STL files. Some files are free, some are not. Um, you could have a commission, so you could pay a, uh, a professional designer to design what you would like. Um, you know, you could join a Patreon kind of a thing. Um, the one thing I would caution you there is make sure you're reading the terms and conditions of those, um, i.e., are you planning to sell those prints or just make, them your, make it for yourself, and how does that align with the terms and conditions of that Patreon? Um, second, uh, or lastly, um, design your own. So you, I've done a couple tutorials on how to use Fusion 360. I'm teaching myself, trying to anyway, to how to use Blender. Um, there's also SolidWorks out there. Um, and there's also several other organic software items uh, or software programs. Mesh Mixer is another one that you can use to modify STL files. Um, it, there, like I just mentioned, there is a, a learning curve to design and there's a learning curve to print. All right, so pluses and minuses. So going down the pluses of a filament, it's not as messy, much bigger print volume, not nearly as many chemicals, fewer consumables, um, the raw material is a little bit less expensive. The negative side of a filament printer, less detail and the cycle time or how long it takes you to print the object can be a little bit longer. Resins, pluses, more detail, um, cycle times can be shorter. The downside is they're messy, or they can be. Smaller print volume. You do have to use chemicals. Um, there are several consumables that you have to think about. Isopropyl alcohol, paper towels, and gloves. And the prints can be fragile depending on how well you cure them or if you over cure them. Again, there's a lot of variables that you would need to kind of pick up as you go through this process. So you've been listening to me for the last 14 minutes, and you're probably asking yourself, okay, that's great. So what do I need to do? So I kind of put down what I thought was a good use of each type of printer. So filament is great for things like thrones where you're a fairly large object. object. Um, so that's what I did my Black Panther. That's kind of how I got started printing. Um, designed my own throne, printed it, painted it, and so on. Um, walls, uh, doors, you know, if you want to do custom doors or cathedral windows for your diorama, filament's great for that. Um, items requiring wood or stone look. So there are filaments out there that look like wood and stone right off the spindle, and they don't really require you to paint much. Um, and then, of course, larger props like manhole covers, crates, uh, where smoothness of the print isn't quite as important. Um, the other piece is um, when it comes to uh, resin prints, smaller items like weapons, heads, um, some of the riot shields that I've done, light fixtures, 
They're really tiny, small, intricate things. They look orders of magnitude better using a resin 3D printer than they would with a filament printer. And you know, there are folks that can get really good results with a filament printer, but out of the box, uh, for me personally, a resin printer for small items, just you, you couldn't hold a torch to it with a filament printer. Um, so personally, I will just pick whatever um, the project is. That's the kind of print that I'll use. So my big stuff like, um, you know, I'm right now I'm printing a Skyhawk for G.I. Joe. I'm doing that with mostly filament, uh, whereas Zartan Sled, I am using almost all resin for that. And that's a function of the size of the item um, along with the detail associated with those um, and what I want to get out of it and what I want to do with the print. So each job or each diorama is going to have its own unique set of uh, technology. And sometimes you do, you do part of the print in filament and just post-process the heck out of it. And then the other part of it, you make out a resin that looks great coming right off the, uh, right off the printer. And once you post-process, you prime, paint, and you're good to go. So that's about all I had for today. Um, please subscribe, comment below. Um, if you have any tutorials that you would like to see, um, please indicate that in the comment section. Thank you, and have a happy Easter weekend.